Hi, my name is Paul Gager. I'm a GIS specialist here at MangoMap, and what I'm going to talk to you about today is how web maps are used by townships and county governments to disseminate information to their constituents and also for other departments to access that information in an up-to-date live web map. Now traditional outputs from a GIS department typically include PDFs and other hard copy outputs, but a web map is a great way to allow people to access current information and to answer questions for themselves. For example, if they want to know what, what's the lot number that I'm on, where are my nearest compost bins, which zoning area am I in, where are the new developments proposed in this town, where are the refuge places in the case of emergency. There are many, many different types of questions that can be answered by a GIS. And what I'm going to show you here today is a couple of examples of real web maps that have been implemented, one in Canada, in Alberta, and one in California, which is a county government. So let's dive in and have a look. Okay, so here I am at the Town of Statler website, which is in Alberta. It's northeast of Calgary. And this is their main website, statler.net. And the maps can be found on the visit page. And maps. And then here there's a section on mapping and GIS. They've got printable maps and also web maps, which is what we're going to look at today. There are a number of different links here that go to the web maps, but let's have a look at the economic development map to start with. When I click that link, it opens in a new window. Okay, and here we are at the town of Stettler. It's not, a, it's not a huge town, but they've got a great resource here in their web map, and they've obviously put a lot of effort into updating the base map to give everything context. Now the layer that's on by default is uh, development sites. These are these hatched areas in purple. So let's click on one of those and see what it's about. Okay, there's the address and there's the development type, ASP lands, needing or existing. And these are the development steps that are required. Create an ASP, subdivide, create right of way, etc. The service is required, water and sewer at south property line number of buildings and tax roll ID. So you'll see there are a number of these development sites in town that can be queried. Okay, this one's empty commercial land and all buildings. So you can see it's a complex map. There's lots of different information. It's multi-scale. As you zoom in, you get more information. So these are really the benefits of a web map. It allows you to drill down and get to a fine level of detail um, and access the full database that's available from the township uh, in a way that just wouldn't be possible if you're thinking traditional outputs such as a PDF or a hard copy map. Now this map also has the individual lots shown on it. The lot boundaries shown in gray. So again, we can see the address and the lot number, the tax roll, okay? And if we scroll down here, we can see the zoning plan. So they have a good detailed zoning plan. The areas in red there are commercial central. The pink areas are commercial transitional, and so on and so forth. Again, very detailed with specific information. And if we click on one of those lots, we can get the actual zoning type. If we scroll down this list here, they also have a nice up-to-date air photo of the town, which is a great resource to have if we're going to overlay other kinds of information, such as lot boundaries. A couple of other things we can do with the map here. Um, there's a street view integration. So if we want to have a look on one of these commercial streets here, if we drop the target to where we want to have a look and launch street view, we can get a look at that place and see what's going on there. The map also allows measurements. So there's a measure tool here. For example, if we want to know the width of this road, okay, 14 meters. We can also measure areas. Okay, so that building's 173 square meters. 
We can also produce traditional map outputs, such as a PDF. If we click the print button here, we can get a nice layout. We can position the map as we wish, print to PDF, uh, and we can print that to a hard copy or email it to somebody as required. If we've clicked on a feature on the map, then that information will appear in the pop-up and that feature will highlight on the map. So that's a good record of what's going on in that particular place at that time. Okay, this map also has a query tool that allows us to query the data. So let's say, for example, we want to query lots and find all lots that are larger than two acres. Okay, so there's 140 lots meeting that criteria. We can view those as a table. We can download them as a CSV and do additional work with them. This has various kinds of filters. For example, we can enter the tax roll IDs. We can specify a plan number that we're looking for. We can specify a street number. So find all the lots on 43rd Avenue. Okay, there we go. So four lots on that avenue. So many different kinds of inquiry are possible. Now this map is maintained by a GIS specialist at the town of Stettler and part of their daily work it would be to uh, maintain this map. Uh, if there are periodic updates, maybe weekly or monthly, that need to be published to the website, they can do that. And it just makes sure that everybody working and living in the town of Stettler always have access to the latest information. Okay, and the second example I'm going to show you here today, we're on the Plumas County, California website, uh, plumascounty.us, and here's the homepage with all listing all the services and contacts for the county, and this is their GIS page, where it provides information to people about what a GIS is and the kinds of products and information sources provided by the county. You can see on the left hand side here there's a number of links to resources so let's have a look at GIS maps and data and let's go to the map portal. Okay so this is the map portal which is a collection of maps that are available publicly on the Plumas County's website. There's a bit of an introduction at the beginning there uh, telling people how to use the map and then we can see the maps themselves which are organized into different themes so there's the Census Data Map Viewer, Board of Supervisors Map, uh, Dixie Fire, which is a terrible fire in the county, I think last year, Population Trends, Land Ownership, Zoning, Snow Load. So you can see many, many different kinds of maps that are available to residents of the county or other departmental staff within the county. Let's have a look at the Dixie Fire Map here for a minute. And you can see we've got links up the top here that will explain to a first time user how they can utilize the map and get information from the map. You can see we've got a before and after image of this area and we've got a slider tool so we can compare and see the total destruction, which is just terrible in this particular area. And links to photos of those sites. So this is a 360 drone image, it's obviously, obviously taken right after the fires, you can see emergency services there, and it looks like complete and total destruction. This map also has bookmarks which we can use to jump to particular parts of the county. Okay, so it's a convenient way to navigate the site and quickly get the information that's required. Okay, so let's go back to the main maps portal here and let's have a look at a parcel query. So a parcel query is a very common type of query uh, at a county level. So we can use this map to locate properties using the assessor parcel number or APN. And if we just zoom in a bit first, we'll see the parcels themselves. Okay, and if we, if we know a parcel number, we can enter that into the quick search here in the bottom right. So 12814-2020, okay, there's that parcel. If we click on that, we can see information about it. So the APN, the approximate size, and a link to the assessor map page. 
which will take us to an external site. And there's the original plan of the subdivision of that area. Uh, that's a PDF document there. Okay, we can also do an address search on this map. For example, let's search for number 10 East Spruce Road. Okay, we're taken to that place and it pops up immediately with that parcel information. So it's a really quick way to find a parcel and get a link to the assessor map page. Okay, let's go back to the main map portal here. Okay, and they've got a map here called what district am I in? Okay, and again, we can do an address search, for example, number 10 East Spruce Road, Portola, California. Okay, and there's the APN information. And I can switch on this districts layer and see that I'm in district one. So the supervisorial districts. Okay, because they have pr precise boundaries, having an interactive web map like this allows you to know exactly which district you are in. Okay, let's go back to the map portal here and see what else we've got. Let's have a look at the population trends and land ownership map. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit here. So if we look at the legend here, okay, and so what's returned is the land ownership information. So the blue areas, uh, local government areas, green areas of federal government, and then the rest is a mix of BLM and State of California, as well as private land. Okay, so that's just a quick introduction to the GIS maps available on the Plumas County website. These are, of course, just the maps that have been made public to disseminate information. It's also possible to share maps internally. For example, if it's only for use by the internal staff of the county, then it's possible to share that way. So each map can have its own sharing settings. Of course, each map is designed to serve a particular purpose with particular tools, particular layers on it. So it allows you, rather than just having one map with everything thrown in, it allows you to keep things focused. And so somebody using that map can quickly get the information that they need. Okay, thanks for watching.